Hey everyone, it's Flackfire. Battlefield 1's Turning Tides expansion is due out for release in December, and DICE recently confirmed the addition of a new faction in the DLC, the British Royal Marines. The Royal Marines played a key role in the Zeberga raid, confirmed a feature in Turning Tides. They were also present at Gallipoli, but their role there was much smaller. This is some players wondering why the Australian and New Zealand Army Corps, or ANZACs, weren't featured instead as a new faction. It turns out they are, or at least in appearance. When EA gave me early access to the new Cape Helles and Achibaba maps, I was surprised to see some familiar uniforms. Anzacs are featured in Turning Tides, though they're still classified as British forces. The British faction's medic class is portrayed as the quintessential Anzac soldier, complete with a slouch hat, blue tunic, and shorts. The decision to do this for the faction's medic is hardly coincidental. DICE already has a special weapon skin named after John Simpson Kirkpatrick in-game. Kirkpatrick was a stretcher bearer with the Australians at Gallipoli and was known for using donkeys to evacuate wounded comrades. He was killed at Anzac Cove in 1915. The other kits are a mixture of gear that would have been used by both British and Anzac forces. They include pith-style sun helmets, British service caps, and even service caps with sunshades to protect the neck from the scorching sun in the Dardanelles. Most soldiers are equipped with the standard British PO8 webbing as well. Another neat detail is that DICE actually fixed the slouch hat. Battlefield 1's multiplayer alpha featured the hat, but it was turned up on the wrong side. Why DICE didn't just call the British forces ANZACs for these two maps is unknown to me, though it may have to do with the need to record new ANZAC voiceovers for characters. Technically, the majority of Entente troops used in the campaign were British, but the Gallipoli experience weighs much more heavily on Australia and New Zealand's cultural identity. The events on the beaches of the Dardanelles came at a time when the two dominions had only recently gained some autonomy from the British Empire. When the invasion of Gallipoli began in 1915, few could or wanted to imagine the campaign lasting over 10 months. It was supposed to be a quick punch to knock the Ottoman Empire out of the war. Instead, it grew into a bitter stalemate. By the time the Entente forces pulled out of the peninsula, the campaign had claimed over a quarter million casualties on each side. Around 50,000 Australians and 15,000 New Zealanders fought in the Gallipoli campaign. They faced attrition warfare, disease, and other horrendous conditions, yet they stubbornly persisted until withdrawn in January 1916. For most familiar with World War I, it's impossible to mention Gallipoli without thinking of Anzac forces. It was also the largest amphibious operation in the history of the world at the time. Undoubtedly, many players will be pleased to see Anzacs represented in Turning Tides, but just as many will be miffed at the fact they're still referred to as British forces. Of course, all of what you're seeing here in-game is early in development, and I still have some time to make some changes. Whether or not they do likely depends on you. What are your thoughts on the Anzac representation in Battlefield 1? Would you like to see a distinctly Anzac faction in-game? Tell me in the comments and leave feedback for DICE on the official CTE subreddit at reddit.com slash battlefield underscore live. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like and share on social media. Be sure to subscribe as well and turn on notifications for the latest Battlefield 1 news. To take your Battlefield 1 game to the next level, check out the Battlefield 1 Ultimate Utility app with a link in the video description. Thanks for watching.